Hey, that's me. Sweet. Hello. Um, so I'm Mark, and uh, yeah, we're going to talk about some Unity for automotive and industrial uses. So a little bit of PowerPoint, and then we're going to get into a, a, a cool product demo. It's one of my favorite demos of late, so I'm just, it runs right at 30 minutes. So I'm just going to start off uh, and talk to you a little bit about how this came about. So obviously Unity is a game engine. Uh, it's been one what we've been doing for about 15 years. But more and more, we started to see companies like these using Unity, um, Volkswagen, Ford, Boeing, aerospace companies, manufacturing companies. Uh, so about a year ago, we really decided to, to put together a team and really tackle this industry. Uh, and really what it comes about is trying to really change the way this, this industry works. Uh, right now, most cars are designed like that, with clay models. They are sculpted in clay, full-size clay models. They actually paint those models. Uh, they put them in wind tunnels. They're used for design. They're used for engineering. But more and more, we're starting to see cars being designed like this, in virtual reality, uh, using Unity, just like we see here. So this is a team at Audi. Um, this is in Germany. I was actually at this exact facility about uh, oh, three months ago or so at Unite Berlin. Uh, and I sat in this room, and it's very cool. This is what they see, but this is what it's like in VR. So they're actually able to tune the cars, make this design decisions, uh, and they're able to actually work globally. So they could have a team of four people there in Germany, another four somewhere else, all appearing to be in the same room working collaboratively. It's a really, really cool workflow. Uh, this was another neat thing that I saw. This is a guy sitting in a car, sitting in a car chair. Everything about that is, has, has trackers on it, so it's all tracked. He's able to adjust the seat, adjust the steering wheel. And this is actually a seat and a steering column from a car that's not yet shipping. So inside VR, he's seeing this, and he's able to really kind of decide how that's going to work. Uh, I sat in something like this at Volkswagen in Wolfsburg, and it was a really interesting way that they were able to communicate with their engineers. So they had three different spheres, a green sphere, a, a yellow sphere, and a red sphere. So you're in VR, you're sitting in the car, and let's just say you decide to reach out and try to, to adjust the, uh, the air conditioning vents. You'll see, actually see the particle flow of the, of the air coming out, which was neat, but they could take one of these different colored balls. If, let's say that worked really well. The engineer or the designer thought, yeah, this is perfect. They'd grab this little green virtual ball, stick it on there, and say, yeah, that's good. If they needed a little bit of a change, they use the yellow ball. They put the yellow ball on there, and they can touch the ball and make a voice annotation on it. So they click the yellow ball, I don't like the way this is going to feel. This is a little bit off. If it's really messed up, they use the red ball. And as soon as they use those different, those different spheres, that communication, that voice annotation, gets sent to all the different teams working on that component, and they can start to make changes. It's fascinating. Guys in VR, puts the sphere there, touches it, makes a voice command. That change now gets pushed on to different people around the assembly line, around the design facility. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, this is Volkswagen. They're doing... They're, they have an assembly line in Wolfsburg that's three kilometers long. The entire assembly line for the Golf is three kilometers long. When they change that car, so every four, five, or six years when they make a complete design change, that entire floor gets wiped clean and they start from scratch. New robots get put in, new metal presses, everything that makes that car. They design all of that in VR now. The entire facility gets built in VR first so they can see how does that lay out, how does it work. Uh, oftentimes these, these, these workers have to be in very awkward positions to get bolts and, and nuts and uh, put components in various positions. So they actually are able to design custom seats, custom things for them to harnesses for them to support them. So they, they have less injuries, they can work faster. Um, so, you know, faster, less injuries, that's really, really huge in automotive. Uh, and all of, it, all of this, again, is designed in Unity, pushed out in VR, entire assembly lines. It's fascinating. Uh, car configurators. This is for the Lincoln Continental. If you go to a Ford dealership, a Lincoln dealership, they're going to hand you a tablet. You're going to pick how you want that car to look, what kind of rims, what color wood you want on there. You give it back to them, you hit buy, and you're able to now purchase that car. Uh, this is the suspension for the Ford Raptor. What's really cool here is all of this, all of this, all this stuff that we see on here. This is CAD data that was imported through Pixies put into this, into this iPad app, you go to the Ford dealer, they're going to give you this app, and you can see how that suspension works. I'm going to show you a video in just a second What actually shows this animated. But they didn't have to do any additional modeling. Load up the CAD data, throw a couple materials on it, make the suspension animate just using some physics, and boom, you're done. Uh, this is also really cool. This is from a, a prototype car, car made by a Chinese company called Byton. 
This entire display, the entire width of the car is one big display. It's all prototyped in Unity. So right now, currently, you couldn't do a dashboard or something like that for a real car with Unity, uh, like a speedometer or something like that. You can prototype it, but you can't actually push it out. Yesterday, we saw something on Utiny or Project Tiny. This is actually going to allow us to have real embedded interfaces inside of automobiles. It has to be crash-proof. The last thing you want, you know, Unity never crashes. We all know that. It's perfect software, right? But, you know... <laughs> Let's just say it did crash. You, you couldn't have an experience like that crash in an automobile. So we have to make that a bulletproof product. And once that happens, uh, we'll be able to actually have this ISO certification from the government that will allow us to actually put these displays made with Unity inside of actual automobiles, inside of different industrial uses. Uh, really cool stuff. I actually saw this car at the LA Auto Show just last week. Um, the display is amazing. It's all prototype with Unity. So this is, a, this is a LiDAR view. This is actually using Unity for autonomous driving, teaching cars how to drive. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. This is fascinating. Uh, NVIDIA makes a hardware component called the NVIDIA Drive System. It has a bunch of different video inputs. Those video inputs are from all different types of cameras. Uh, this is like a 360 unwrapped camera, LiDAR cameras, uh, solid state LiDAR, which is this one here. Uh, and these are just different camera shaders. Unity can create any type of camera you can, you can think of, right? They're just shaders that you put on the camera. So you create an entire world like Grand Theft Auto inside of Unity, but rather than try to run over people on purpose, you want to <laughs> avoid those people, right? So we're able to teach cars how to drive in these virtual worlds and actually output real video of all these different types of video, like we see here, into that NVIDIA drive system or some of the other autonomous driving hardware bits, and that is actually going to power that simulation. So around the world, there's thousands of simulations being run every minute of cars driving around these virtual worlds, outputting real video. One of the coolest things I learned at Volkswagen was what happens when a bug hits that camera? You got a camera looking forward and a big mosquito hits it or a big, well, not a mosquito, but maybe a big, I don't know, a big flying something hits it. The camera's now occluded. The, camera, the car can't just come to a stop. So that's when machine learning takes over, uses the other cameras to figure out a safe alternative to either park the car or come up with a different way to continue the autonomous drive now that one of those cameras has a bug on it or mud on it or rain. Uh, all these things you really don't think about just all fascinating. Um, this here is actually, this shot right here, a lot of intersections have cameras. People drive like crazy. You're never going to get a perfect driver until we have autonomous cars. So we're actually able to make intersections safer by simulating with machine learning how, an, how a terrible driver might go through an intersection. And you all have some interesting drivers here in India. So I mean, that's my first observation when I came from the airport. So I don't know if that'll ever work here, but uh, being able to, to really kind of make intersections safer by using machine learning and faking how cars might go through an intersection in, in not the best way. So anyway, lots of different uses. Uh, and a way a lot of this came about was through a collaboration that we have with a company called Pixies. So we did a lot of research and found that they make the best CAD importer in the world. It's super duper fast and extremely accurate. So we partnered with them and that really opened up this, this industry for us to allow these companies to take high resolution CAD data and bring it into Unity. How many of you know what a NURBS model is? All right, not, not a lot of you. So NURBS stands for Non-Uniform Rational Beast Blinds. We used to use NURBS a lot in 3D animation uh, back in like the days of Jurassic Park, not the real Jurassic Park, but the movie, uh, because polygons, you couldn't use a lot of polygons back then, so we used NURBS. NURBS are infinitely smooth curves. So if you think of like a font when you're typing on your computer, if you make a font 5,000 point, it's still super smooth, right? That's because it's a NURBS. It's essentially a vector um, described, it's a math described curve. Polygons aren't like that. Polygons have vertices. If you try to make a piston, a cylinder, that's round with, with polygons, at some point you're going to zoom into it and you'll start to see facets. The engine would explode immediately. So CAD data has to be perfectly smooth, perfectly precise. Unity doesn't render CAD, or Unity doesn't render NURBS. So what, what Pixies does is it converts all of that high-resolution CAD data it uses these crazy math algorithms to convert that into polygons. And I'm going to show you how all that works. It's amazing to watch it happen. So I'm going to get out of PowerPoint. I'm going to show you really quickly a little video that I probably should have just started with. But this just shows you some of the animations of, of what I was talking about. So here we see it for a simulation. Here's that design studio at audio, the guy adjusting the camera. This is what he sees, the factory at, uh, at Volkswagen, power walls. Uh, this is at, at Daimler at Mercedes-Benz. 
the car configurator at uh, Cadillac. This is one's in VR. You go into a showroom, you put the headset on. And there again, there's that Ford Raptor that I was telling you about animating the suspension. This is just a couple days work once you can get that CAD data in. And then beautiful, beautiful simulation of a car. So that's the Volkswagen Touareg, um, augmented reality. This is a cool little example that, uh, that Lexus did. This is one of my favorites, the VR paint tool. I've actually painted a couple cars. It's a really, really tricky process how you have to keep your wrist. Uh, and that thing actually simulates that perfectly. So it really teaches you how to paint a car. I kind of wish I had that first so I wouldn't have had runs in my paint. But anyway, I digress. Let's start up and I want to show you how we can bring that CAD data in. I want to show you how we can manip manip manipulate it. We're going to go into VR. I'm going to show you the new material library and I got 20 minutes to do it. So here we go. Uh, going to start off with just bringing that CAD data in. So I got a little blank scene here. It's going to open up. Uh, this is an entirely empty scene. We've got one camera. We've got one light source. Uh, I do have a model that I've previously imported. If I have time, I'll show you this one as well because it has some different LODs on it. Um, it's just going to take a sec to start up because it has that first model in there. All right, cool. So there we go. So I've installed Pixies. Pixies is a plugin. It's made of two components. There's the Unity plugin, and then there's also Pixie Studio. Pixie Studio is a standalone program, gives you a few more options. Uh, but I'm just going to use the Pixies plugin because it's freaking awesome. So watch this. Import CAD. What do you want to import? All right, that's easy enough. So somewhere here on my desktop, somewhere here on my desktop. No, not downloads. Don't want to look there. In my desktop, uh, we have the Lexus drivetrain. So, I'm not quite sure why Lexus trusted me with this, but this is the actual CAD data for the Lexus LC500H drivetrain. This is a uh, car that just came out recently, and this is the menu that pops up with the Pixies plugin. Doesn't ask a whole lot of stuff. Uh, ask me, do I want to have LODs, different levels of detail of this car? I'm going to say no. I just want one. I want the absolute very highest quality of tessellation, conversion from NURBS to polygons. Uh, I'm not going to have it generate UVs or anything like that. Everything will be good, and I'm going to click on import. And I've been doing demos for a long, long time. Normally, I would never demo importing files, right? That seems a bit silly, but watch this. This was actually kind of important. If I open up my task manager, and it's going to be really slow right now because every single ounce of power of my little year-and-a-half-old laptop is being used to import this data. So you look, my CPU is at 100%. If I go to performance, we can see that we are not on my disk drive. Look at that. My CPU is pegged 100% perfect performance. Uh, so what I have here is a quad CPU, so four CPUs, four virtual CPUs. And you can see that all of them are pegged at 100%. Peg, it drops down for just a second right there, and then it's going to pop back up again. So it does two passes. The first is the hardcore math of converting all that, those NURBS data to polygons, and then the second is arranging the hierarchy. Uh, this is going to generate about 55 million triangles. There's 3,500 unique objects that make up this drivetrain. And this whole conversion from NURBS to polygons with the Pixies plug-in takes about a minute and 20 seconds. If I worked for Ford, if I worked for Volkswagen, Boeing, I would probably have a high-powered workstation next to me with maybe two AMD bulldozer CPUs in it and have 64 threads or those crazy single piece of a car, right? You wouldn't model the fasteners. Like, actually, if I zoom in here, check this out. That's geometry. You would never do geometry. You just use a texture map, right, as a game artist. But when you're using an engineering model, this is the actual model that created this car. So all of that stuff, because when you rub your finger on it, there's actually a little recess on that button, that has to be in the CAD model. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, if we go here and let's say I want to do, um, let's say I wanna do the, the classic explode view. Actually, let me just do something really quick here. Uh, I'm going to grab just this piece and zoom in a bit. This is frame up on this. If I pull this out, look, that's the cover. That's that little cover, the little leather cover that goes over the airbag. This is the airbag assembly. Look behind this. Every, the fasteners that hold the Lexus logo has to be modeled on this thing. In a game, we would never, ever do this, right? But when you're doing an engineering example, when you're, when you're engineering this, you have to do this kind of stuff. All that stuff is super important to the construction of the vehicle. So a lot of times what you want to do is the classic explode view. You want to take this car and not blow it up like we could do with a game engine, but we want to expand it so that we can see all the parts inside of it, right? Watch how easy this is to do. Uh, we've got a little script, and actually we have two scripts. So one thing that's interesting with CAD models is your pivot points 
coming in really weird places with CAD data. So I've got a, a little script, and what it does is it figures out the size of this object. So this script will work on a Boeing 777, which I've seen in Unity, all the way down to a little tiny model. So it figures out the size of your model, makes a bounding box, and repositions the pivot point, the center of every single one of those objects to the, to the dead center of it. And then we're going to expand it from that center. So what I'll do here is I'll just simply go uh, to Custom Tools. Actually, sorry, let me select the hierarchy first. We'll go up here, select the hierarchy, and I'll just run this tool. It's just an editor script I wrote called Adjust Hierarchy. So that's done. So that creates our first little, that just resets the pivot. You don't see it do anything, but just did a couple things behind the scene. The next thing I'm going to do is go into my scripts folder here, and I have a script called Move and, ex uh, move and Examine. It's not too long. It's about yay big. Uh, a lot of this is just the inputs for the mouse buttons and the VR controllers that I'm going to hook it up to. So, uh, but there's a little bit of math. And what this math does is it pushes these bits apart. So watch this. I'm going to take move and examine. I'm going to drag and drop it on my root node. And we can see that it added that as a component. So now when I press play and we go into, into our game mode, I can spin this around. And with the middle mouse button, I can expand that. You show this to a car company and their minds are just blown. Like, holy, do you know how long that would take us? Like, a week? A week, and you do it in seconds. Any model they give me, I can do it in, in minutes. It's, it, it's crazy. Uh, I can spin that back like so. But you know what? It can go even further than this. And you all know how easy Unity is with VR. Most of you should, at least. Uh, so watch this. I've got a little VR headset here. This is one of the, uh, the Microsoft headsets. It uses inside-out tracking, so I don't need any kind of trackers. It's really nice. It's nice and portable. And I'm just going to go minimize Unity really quick. And I'm just going to start up the Mixed Reality portal to engage our headset. So once we do this, we just have to do a quick little, I'm going to go into, uh, looks like i got a welding mask on. You know what's cool about these headsets is they flip up like this. So they're really nice to develop with. They're super lightweight. I do have to say these are, are great. And they actually travel well. So the first thing we have to do is just look around and scan the room. So it's done that. Now, hello, I'm going to go into Unity. And all we have to do, of course, to make Unity work in VR is go into our, our player settings and turn one checkbox on. This blows their mind. Holy crap, with one little checkbox, I go into VR? Sure, let's do it. So turn on virtual reality is supported. We're in Windows. Uh, now, the last thing I want to do is hook up my controllers. So where are my controllers? Oh, I should get them out of my bag of tricks. So here you go. I got my two controllers. So these use optical sensors. These lights may be a little bit strong, but let's see. We may get a little bit of vibration, but should be all right. So we got our controllers. Let's just make sure we can see them here. All right, cool. There they are. So I've got some 3D models of those controllers right here. Actually, these are uh, Oculus controllers, but who cares? And I'm just going to drop them onto my parent or my, my camera roots that they're parented to the camera. And there they are. So just a couple little controllers like that. Uh, I've got one other script that's going to translate the mouse coordinates that I was using to, the, to, the, uh, to these controllers. So simple little script. It just remaps my, uh, my inputs. It is called, here in my scripts folder, it's called VR inputs. Drag and drop that on the root as well. And now I can see I have both scripts on there. And if I press play, this should all be pretty darn magical. So let's see if this works. So I see some interesting stuff in my headset that you guys don't see yet. And whoop, whoop, yep, sweet. So I can take this. Yeah, so the lights are making this jitter a little bit, but just ignore that. My favorite thing of all time in VR is to stick my face into the steering wheel of the Lexus. This is so VR satisfying, I can't even tell you. Uh, like, it's right there. Like, I, as an engineer, I could sit here and study this in ways you just couldn't really imagine before. I can just pick this around. I can just stick my face. Wow, look at that. All the pistons are in there. What do you guys see? Do you guys, yeah, you guys see all that? Okay, good. Like, I was expecting you to be like, ooh, ah, wow. <laughs> There you go. Look at that. Stretch that apart. This all works with any CAD model in a couple minutes. This blows people's minds. All of you game developers can go to these manufacturers and say, hey, you know what? Let me show you what I can do with your CAD models in just a few minutes. Come work for us. Come work for us. What's also great about some of these companies is, you know, the game industry is amazing. Uh, a lot of you might be making indie games. You know, if one day you're working at this company, you ship that game, you go to another company. If you got kids, you're, you're, you know, at least my friends back home, they're all flying around to different, different companies all the time. Once you get a job at Boeing, you could be there for life, right? So they're really secure companies, these big industrial jobs. So as a career message, 
it's a really good time to be a Unity developer, um, both with architecture and engineering, which I'm going to talk about later, and also automotive. It's just opening up a real huge world of jobs that are you know, well-paying and very stable. So it's a, I don't usually talk about that kind of stuff, but it is pretty cool um, what's happening now that with, these, with, you know, with the Unity game engine being used in these new markets. So that's all for this model. I'm going to close this up real quick. And I want to talk to you for the last five minutes about the Unity Material Library. And this is pretty darn awesome. So what we've done, let me just shut down my headset here. So what we've done to help automotive companies uh, and, and other industrial companies is we've created a, mat a material library of super duper high res materials that are infinitely tileable, tileable and just darn right gorgeous. So watch this. I'm going to open up the material library. It's about 150 materials that we're shipping with of things like leather, wood grains. Uh, Andrew was talking about the, uh, the stack lit shader. So for doing car paint, car paint's crazy difficult. You've got flake, you've got pearl, the stuff that gives it that shine. Uh, and then you've got your clear coat. Clear coat drastically changes the index of refraction and reflection. So if you don't get that right, the car paint will never look right. So that's why we created the stack shader. And what you'll see here is a good example. So it, it, uh, there's 150 different materials. Each one has several texture maps that go along with it. And we're going to provide you all of these materials here in just about a month or so. Uh, and not only are we giving you the materials, we're going to give you the recipe for how we actually made these materials. All you need is a DSLR camera, a little tiny steel ball, and a flash. And a, and a uh, oh, the word's going to come to me. Darn it, a polarizer. A polarizer. Uh, check this out. So. These are all types of materials that you'd expect to find on an automobile. Things like, you know, these things like you'd have on your dash, uh, things like you'd have on your steering wheel. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. And you can see we have a whole bunch of them here. If we go over here, here we go. Let's take a look at car paint. Check this out. This one's a bit, I cranked up the light a little bit, but there's like a really extreme version of the car flake in there. I dialed that up a little bit. Uh, if we go here to some of the other colors, it's not nearly as extreme. There you go. But how realistic is that? Like, it really captures that feel of car paint. Uh, and what's nice is you just drag and drop these onto your vehicle. So here we have things like different wood grains, like so. Uh, if we go back here, you want to make a realistic brake caliper. We've got different types of brushed aluminum, nice, smooth, polished chrome, uh, all these different materials. And again, they're all infinitely tileable. So you put them on your cars, and they look absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to show you one more scene. So I just got a couple more minutes left. And let's go here. And I want to show this to you on an actual car, to show you how cool they look when you actually apply them to something other than some, some spheres. So again, Lexus, kind enough to give me the interior, the exterior, and the drivetrain of this car. Like, this is top secret stuff. Like, I, don't, I just don't get... Anyway, I'm very happy for them. Thank you, Lexus, because it makes my job really easy, and uh, it's very wowable to, to see this. So uh, again, this is a really big model, so it takes a second to load. I'm just going to show you how we can drag and drop some of these materials on, these, uh, on this beautiful car. So let this thing load. Come on. There we go. All right. So just looking through the window oh, that the blue shader compiled. There we go. So check it out. Look at that beautiful, first of all, that beautiful glass. Uh, we have some reflections going on there. And if I just zoom into the car, oh, look at that. How freaking cool is that? So we've got some beautiful shine going on there. If I just select this and frame up. Let's just take a look. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, hang on. Come on, mouse. What's going on? Oh, no. There we go. Let's take a look at the seat. The seat's amazing. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? That's what you'd expect to find on your seat. Uh, and again, these are all tileable. And again, there's 150 of them. So let's just say I want to take a look at this little bit of the car, this seat. Um, you know what, let's make, this, uh, let's make this look like grandma's couch. I don't know. Like that, the most uncomfortable car seat in the world. It'd be really itchy, but how cool is that, right? All these different materials, all these different textures. So I've got leathers. Let's make this a nice, you know, whatever leather, that color leather, this color leather. We can change the density to the, gra the grains. Uh, if we spin the camera around a bit, let's zoom out. And let's just grab one more thing here. Look at all the nice, beautiful aluminum we have on here. Look at that. You know what's crazy about manufacturers? That's, that's geometry. The stitching is geometry. Crazy. In games, we would just use texture maps, right? But again, that's a piece of the car. It has to be accounted for, so it's geometry. Crazy. Crazy. That drivetrain, as I mentioned, was 55 million triangles. 
Um, so again, super duper thanks to Lexus. Look at that beautiful brushed metal on there, the brushed aluminum, all part of the material library that we're gonna ship and give to all of you. It'll just be free on the asset store. Uh, I think when 2018.3, um, or 2019.1. Anyway, it's like a month or two away. You'll see a big blog about it. Uh, and again, we're going to tell you exactly how we make these materials so you can make them yourself. So last thing I'll show you, I'm going to leave Unity. And let's take a look at... You put it all together, and you can come up with really beautiful interactive experiences for your customers, for your clients. And this one's going to run here at the absolute best quality. Um, so this is the Volkswagen Touareg. And it's just a nice little example that can run just on a loop at a showroom. Uh, and again, you know, because we support all of those awesome different hardware platforms, this could be running on an Xbox that you have on a showroom. I noticed here in the hotel they've got a couple Xboxes. Put this in a kiosk and this can just run. But what can happen is someone can just walk up, they can pause this, and they can say, you know what, how about I fly around the car? So rather than have just a video, you can have a looping interactive experience. We obviously have a lot of depth of field going on, so I'm going to let it run a little bit more until the depth of field turns off. I was going to try to put a slider in here for just to make this easier so I don't have to wait for the depth of field to turn off, but I got lazy. Anyway, almost there. But anyway, this is just run. People think this is a video, but no, it's not. You can stop, you can walk up, you can do some stuff with it. Let's see, we have depth of field still on. Let's fly in the car. I want to show you the materials up close. Look at that. Still a little bit of depth of field, but these are all things that you can do with the material library. And of course, bringing in that CAD data from Pixies. So really cool stuff. So anyway, that's a little bit on Unity for Automotive um, and industrial uses. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, I'll be roaming around. Uh, and then later this afternoon, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the cool stuff we're doing with architecture. So there you go. That was a fast 30 minutes. Thank you all very, very much. Woo